Welcome to the Big Movie Mouth Off. We're here at Ruby Cinema Pub. It's sponsored by PC Laptops. I'm Jimmy Martin with Slug Magazine. And I'm Jeff Weiss from X96's Radio for Mail Morning Program. We're here to review some movies today, and the film today we're going to be reviewing is called Catfish, which was a documentary at Sundance uh, 2010 that got rave reviews from, from press that had seen it early because it has this twist in it. And what it is, it's a documentary about a photographer in New York who befriends uh, a small girl on Facebook who wants to do renditions of his photographs, like paints them, and the communication between her and the mother and his, her sister all becomes, uh, gets closer and closer until he finds out that who he's communicating with might not exactly be who he thinks it is. Hey, Megan. Hi, how are you? Your voice is not at all what I expected. She must be pretty awesome, at least from Facebook. How long have you been calling each other babe? Two weeks, maybe. I'm pretty good. I'm good. Last night we had a great talk. She told me about a chicken makes an egg every day. Did you know that? Megan, I take you to my room and dry you off, touching every inch of you. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Uh, <laughs> We might have some spoilers here, so uh, to jump into it, it's a lot of fun. And someone, some people actually want to call this the real Facebook movie right. <laughs> instead of the Unlike social, social network. network. <laughs> uh, but I enjoyed it. it. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of like just going on this odd adventure with these you know, small-time you know, filmmakers who got involved in a situation that they never really expected and, and kind of captured something yes. unbelievable. Lightning in a bottle, and this is an emotional roller coaster. This film goes from heartwarming and and early on you it sort of has a my kid could paint that feel to it exactly yeah. uh turns into something more creepy and then turns around and becomes something more heartfelt That's a little heartwarming. megan is a dancer she sings her sister is an artist this is the painting of angela that she did that's the mom yeah wow i know she's hot the facebook family well, that's what we'll call them i really care about this girl I've had a real conversation with her. So you're full on going out? Because I don't know that much about her. I don't really want her getting hurt. I'm not getting hurt. So what's the next move? I think we drive up to Megan's farm in Michigan. This is it. This is it. Just pull up. Do you want to drive into the driveway? Yeah. It's... <laughs> One of the more unique documentary experiences I've had in a while, and and I think something that really served the filmmakers well is it's sort of seat of the pants filmmaking. Yeah, it's they did not know where this story was going to go when they started making the film, which I think is a fantastic way to make a documentary. Yeah, the, the, in fact, I would go so far as to say this is the most vivid and real uh, version of documentary filmmaking. This is not. Crafted filmmaking. This is guerrilla style. This is style. nonfiction. Yeah. This is guerrilla style filmmaking at its best. You've got three guys just hanging out and and staring at this computer in a hotel room in Vail, Colorado, and starting to kind of have the mystery unravel for them. And you can just tell they're freaking out. And they don't. And like one guy doesn't want to be a part of it anymore. Right. He says it's ruining his life. He, and he's like, but "You're blackmailing me to do this, and I don't want to do it." But you know. But then, but there's that little edge of what could it be. And, right. and what's next around that corner and that's what draws them all back in and that's what draws the audience back in too hey, it, it has some very edge of your seat moments I mean <laughs> I don't know that I've been that un uncomfortable in a film in a long long time yeah. I won't spoil it but I mean there's one seat or sequence where I really was on the edge of my seat I'm yeah. like I don't know what's going to happen here I mean, don't right. back into it Why not? because then we can't see what's in front of us I'm all scared this place gives me the creeps let's go Because you know, without spoiling anything, if I spoil something, I apologize. The group of guys decide to go visit these people, right, un unannounced, and they pull into this driveway in like an abandoned farm. And he gets out of the car and starts looking through windows, 
And I swear there's about there's gonna have a guy with a chainsaw right now <laughs> running out from behind right. the bushes and get him. Right. It, it it made me feel like I had the first time I saw Blair Witch Project. Yes. I was seriously that <laughs> stressed out for these people who aren't characters. I, I they are to, real life people. These are filmmakers. I almost thought that this it crossed my mind while I was watching. Like, am I being like Blair Witched again? Is this not real? And is this like no? It's totally real yeah. because because. The build-up, I will admit, to me, for the build-up, wasn't as shocking as I thought it might be. Right. But it's still entertaining. So that's what made me think, okay, this is probably, this, this is real. So, because not everything in life has to, you know, end up in fireworks, but... Right, and and when there's finally that revelation, a lot of filmmakers would stop there. Yes. They don't. They continue to tell the story. Yeah. Which is where things almost take a more interesting turn. That's right. And my problems, and like I said, I don't want to give anything away because I want people to go see this film my problems do come towards the end when they start focusing the film on characters that I don't think they should have right there, I, there, I there's a slight exploitative feel yeah to... and, and, and I don't like I say it's nothing that kills the film but it's just you're looking at this going why why are you taking it in this direction when the story's over here you're kind of you're getting sidetracked right so but but again I think a lot of that can be accounted for with with filmmakers who really were making seed of your something by the seat of true. their pants without a without a clear agenda yeah or or a story frame I, I I loved it because it's just three good friends on an adventure that it's something that you'd want to share with the world and and Unlike a lot of documentaries which wrap up the story, I want to go online and find out where these people are now. Yeah, you, you definitely want to follow up. The other thing I did like about though is this photographer, um, he... Yaniv. He's thrown into the situation where he almost has to become like a 2020 reporter. Yeah. And he doesn't, he's, you can tell he's not comfortable doing it because he has to like interview these people and you're like, he totally doesn't want to be there anymore. Yes. <laughs> but you just, it's just that, it's the donkey with the carrot, you know, just come on, just a little bit further, just a little bit further. So yeah, I, think, I enjoyed it. I think this is great stuff. Yeah. I hope this, I hope this is given consideration for best documentary. Oh, it easily will be. It uh, has to. Uh, I wound up giving it three and a half stars. I give it the exact same three and a half. 